What we want the visitors to our museum to come away with is a sense of the, the depth and the breadth of Native American experience in both North America and South America. The National Museum of the American Indian has one of the most interesting histories of any museum that I can imagine, and we're celebrating our 100-year anniversary of the collection. 100 years ago, in 1916, George Gustav High established an institution to celebrate and reveal the culture of Native American people as, as they existed at that time. 100 years later, the institution that he started has become a national institution, a, a part uh, of the United States itself. I think at the early part of the 20th century, there was almost an expectation by the United States that Native people would sort of become extinct at some point in time. We're still here and we're thriving in many instances, and I think this museum is sort of a physical manifestation of those cultures that have survived. When I was a child, I had heard that we're a dying culture, and to me, that wasn't my truth. That's what NMAI is about, educating individuals in a way that books can't or institutions or schools can't. Well, I come from a unique background in that I'm adopted, so I wasn't raised around my Native American family at all. NMAI is really unique in that they're directly involved with Natives now. They actively collect contemporary Native American art. They invited us here. They engage communities on how things should be preserved. And, you know, if they're removing tape off something, they'll, they'll call the tribe and be like, tell us how these baskets were made. Um, what's the best way to do this? My experience at the NMAI has helped me to understand the time, the place, and the people. Seeing those items that were from my great-great-grandfather, my great-grandfather, is incredible in understanding the historical information and, and what that means throughout the course of time. So many people right now are losing our traditions and our culture, and you know I'm trying to promote and revitalize our people's traditions and ways of storytelling. I genuinely grew up not knowing that there still was a vibrant, contemporary Native American lifestyle. You know, George Gustav High uh, started his museum at a time when the established practice was that museums would collect material from all over the world and then would themselves act as the experts about the care of those materials, its significance, uh, its meaning. What's happened now is people are realizing that you can't discuss those things, you can't care for these objects, you can't understand their significance without involving the source communities themselves. It's through a lot of history that took place in the 1970s and the 1980s, but it resulted in the creation of the National Museum of the American Indian in an act of Congress in 1989. And out of this, a remarkable collection of hundreds of thousands, almost a million artifacts, works of art, objects, came into the stewardship of the Smithsonian. We don't have warriors anymore, but we have lawyers and we have activists, and a lot of them come here to fight those things. Everything here in this museum has a story. And so if people are gonna to get to tolerance and then to acceptance and then to even love another culture, you have to be educated about it. You have to understand what it is and what its place in your life can be. The first time I heard of NMAI, my mother and I walked in the parade in the grand opening in 2004. The first time that I've heard about the, the High Foundation was when I was a, a child and my mother was talking with one of her colleagues about coming and looking in the collections. I knew that she was going to be seeing the very best of what she could see in the country. Without the High Foundation, I know it wouldn't have been preserved as well, so I'm thankful for that. I just remember getting off the elevator at the research branch in the Bronx and the elevator doors opened and right in front of me was floor to ceiling shelving full of pottery from Chaco Canyon. And I just remember standing on the elevator in awe of this incredible work that you usually only see in books. There are still some people who really have kind of a stereotypical image of what Native 
cultures are. And through what we're presenting at the museum, not only in the exhibitions, but also in our seminars and our public programming, we're really working with the community to kind of change those images to let them know that we're here today, we still carry on our traditions and our knowledge. I get to carry on traditions that are a part of who we are. It's not presenting just historical pieces in, the, in a historical context. It's juxtaposing those historical pieces with very contemporary, living, breathing, evolving cultures and contemporary artists who just happen to be native. If George Gustav High hadn't collected them a hundred years ago and more, quite likely they would no longer exist. We are more than our stereotypes, that we are more than just our regalia. They're much more deeper than that. We're very resilient people. We would like for Americans to learn much more and to, to understand in a deep way um, what the contributions have been, how uh, North America was no wilderness when Europeans arrived, that there were thriving civilizations in the Western Hemisphere that had been there for thousands of years. We hold this material in trust for the communities where they originated. What I love about NMAI is that they do a really good job at you know, preserving the culture. They also do a really good job at showing that we still are a living, breathing, and thriving culture. I think what I've learned is that I am valuable, that the things that we have lost or the things that we are losing were someplace safe, someplace that I can see them again.